Gross auto margin. We have our Phil LeBeau on all the time. He says that's the metric to watch when it comes to Tesla. Give us a sense. Um, that decline. Do you expect it to be as, as bad as the estimates are? And what does that tell us about Tesla? So I look at the adjusted auto gross margin, taking out the Zev credits and everything else. You know, that should fall by at least 100 basis points. You know, you've seen 20 to 25 percent price cuts this year. And they're going to put through more price cuts to make their, uh, their bogey 1.8 million units. Um, that means that keeps dropping. So last quarter stock hung in there because consensus was that was going to be a margin trough. Clearly, it wasn't the case. We were of that view the whole time. Question is, when does this stop? Does the bleeding continue into the end of 24? I don't know. All right, so you're calling this bleeding. Some of the bleeding you're talking about is the price cuts when it yeah. comes to the Model 3 and the Model Y, both in the U.S. and in China. So yeah. you're the analyst. Give us a sense. When does Tesla stop dropping prices? I think they're going to do it uh, the whole way through next year. I think Tesla's going to be putting through negative price cuts, um, and I think they have to do it to drive volume at this point. Clearly, there's a slowdown in the industry. It's impacting everyone. Tesla had, uh, you know, obviously negative unit growth sequentially and is having a lot of pressure. Um, they're not immune from this. So they're going to do everything they can to hold on to their market share and uh, remain the leader, which they, they will be. All right. So we're seeing some pressure on the numbers. That's what everybody seems to be expecting across the board. But if you don't mind, we had a conversation before we got the show on. You said there's going to be a little drama on this earnings call. We're not talking dancing robots this time. No. What's the drama that you're expecting? So, so the question is, you know, are we going to see earnings actually contract in 24? And people are going to be looking for bright crumbs around that. And, uh, you know, they're going to have to do a really good job defending things uh, to, to persuade people we're not going to see an earnings contraction in 24. This is a retail-driven stock. Um, it is extremely important that they keep driving sentiment. And, uh, you know, you could, you could very easily see um, a flip in sentiment. And, you know, it's a buy side consensus long as far as a trade. Um, but many of them agree with me that it's egregiously overvalued and the people will be willing to punt very quickly. Using SAT words, egregiously overvalued. All right, I want to hit on one other thing, the UAW strike. Bill Ford's been out saying it shouldn't be Ford and the U.S. automakers against each uh, and against the UAW, but they should all be teaming up against Tesla. Is this UAW strike? Is this a possible headwind for Tesla? Does this reduce the profit or the ability of the U.S. automakers to make autos or have their autos available in the EV sector? You know, I think the unions are likely to collaborate and cooperate with automakers long term. I mean, these are where they uh, it's where they butter their bread. Right. You know, this is a transition in the industry that's uh, that's inevitable. Um, and it's just a negotiation that's going on right now. You know, our president is obviously deeply involved in uh, looking for a positive solution here, you know, but there's there's change and all parties have to accept that change. All right, before we let you go, price target and rating for Tesla? Neutral rating, $85 price target. Wait, 85? Yeah. It's I, trading at 253, right? It's egregiously overvalued. I did not wow. say short it. I did not say short it, but it is egregiously overvalued. Craig, I think I buried the lead. Wow.